Earn me tea. Just checking my tea. Do I do my tea look good? Do my tea look good? Oh yeah, I'm a very good looking pirate. Earn me tea. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, oh. Uh, sorry. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know you guys were there, but I was just checking me tea because I wanted to make sure that I was not an old man. Cause the idea of the fountain of youth has creeped me out. everybody this is 22 tiger dude here and i am here to review pirates of the caribbean on stranger tides i just reviewed at world's end over on kevin falk's channel uh, if you guys want to check it out but now me and kevin falk are here to review on stranger tides on stranger tides is the fourth installment in the pirates of the caribbean franchise this time around it is now directed by rob marshall gore verbinski is no longer directing this franchise this is now directed by rob marshall and and it stars Johnny Depp, Penelope Cruz, Ian McShane, and Jeffrey Rush. So Parts of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides is about when Jack Sparrow wants to go out and find the Fountain of Youth, but then Blackbeard also wants to go out and find the Fountain of Youth, as well as Barbosa. So now we go on this adventure where the crew have to now go find the Fountain of Youth. And when it really comes to Parts of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, um, personally, I was not really a fan of this movie. And I was a huge fan of all the movies Gore Verbinski directed, even At World's End, which I know many consider to be the worst in this franchise. I even thought At World's End was a lot of fun. And this one just really took away a lot of the magic and a lot of the charm. And, you know, Rob Marshall, he's a very good director. He's very talented but he can't really capture the magic that Gore Verbinski was able to create with the first three movies, in my opinion, because what Gore Verbinski did with those movies, they really screamed epic. There was a lot of that pirate's magic, and when I watch On Stranger Tides, man, does it pale in comparison to the first three movies. Now, that's not to say On Stranger Tides is a bad movie. It's not. Johnny Depp is still really good as Jack Sparrow. He is still a lot of fun in this film, and he does still, from time to time, add some nice comedy to him. Nothing has changed as far as Jack Sparrow goes. Jack Sparrow is still Jack Sparrow that I do really like. And then we also do have Jeffrey Rush as Barbosa, which it is cool to see him along with this adventure, especially since we're not really focused with the other characters from the past installments. So it is nice to see Barbosa here. I did really enjoy with where they took his character. And Mr. Gibbs, barely in this film, really not in this film that much, but he is really good for what he has, and it was nice to see him here. I also do think sometimes in this film, the cinematography is very well shot, especially when Jack Sparrow, Barbosa, Blackbeard, you know, everyone, they're out in the jungle. It does look very beautiful. I do think that's where the cinematography shine is when they're out in the jungle. I do think the first 20 minutes of this film was actually really dang good. I do think that it was able to capture at least some of the magic of the first three Pirates films. I did really get into like the first 15 to 20 minutes of the movie. I also do think Black Blackbeard had a couple of good moments and I do think Ian McShane does do a good job for what he has even though I'll get more into his character. And I did like one sequence in the climax which is the sword fight scene it doesn't really last that long but that sword fight scene we do get in the climax that was really fun it was pretty brief but I still really enjoyed with what I saw now personally the problems I had with on stranger tides is that it is nowhere near as memorable as the first three movies and it's like what I just said it's because I just don't really feel the magic here and I really feel like Rob Marshall's direction his style of directing did not really fit on Stranger Times. There's times where it is very well directed, I'll give him that, and it is very properly shot, but for the most part, I didn't wasn't really crazy about his direction. I don't think his direction really has the 
epic scale, the energy that Gore Verbinski's direction has. He definitely does try, but he just does not belong as a director for this film. This is not the kind of film for Rob Marshall at all. The movie is also so dull too, and it's pretty ironic because before um, Pirates of the Caribbean Dem and Tell No Tales, this was actually the shortest Pirates film. And yes, at World's End, I know that's almost three hours long, but that movie, for it being almost three hours long, that had me more engaged personally than On Stranger Tights, a film that's like, I believe, two hours, 15 minutes, 16 minutes, somewhere around there. I personally was getting bored watching this film, and I think it's because most of the characters from the previous films are not in this film. You don't even see Jack Sparrow's crew in this film. Really, you see Mr. Gibbs, but everyone else in Jack Sparrow's crew, they're, they're nowhere. And it was a shame because that's part of what makes these uh, movies, well, Pirates of the Caribbean. It was Jack Sparrow and his crew. And the thing I really loved about the first three is that you know, everyone had their time to shine. It wasn't just Jack Sparrow. Will had his time to shine. Elizabeth had her time to shine. Uh, Gibbs, uh, Davy Jones, Barbosa, you name it. Any character in those first three movies had their time to shine. While this film, the majority of it was focused a lot on Jack Sparrow. And not that I have a problem with that because I love Jack Sparrow, but... I wish all the other characters really had their time to shine. Like, it just feel like Jack Sparrow stole a spotlight from someone like Gibbs, even someone like Barbosa. Even though there's times where the film will focus on him, eventually Jack Sparrow ends up taking more of the spotlight, or even Blackbeard. And speaking of Blackbeard, I did not think that he was really a convincing villain. He has a couple of good moments where I thought he was maybe semi-menacing. Besides that... He is not a memorable villain. He's by far the weakest villain in this entire franchise. And Penelope Cruz, she's fine. I could tell she did have a lot of fun. I did appreciate her for doing that. But I thought as far as her acting, she's okay. She's just doing what she needs to do. And I thought the whole romance between her and Jack Sparrow was just so shoehorned. It was so over the top. It was so silly. And another big problem I have with On Stranger Tides is that it forgets the first three movies. It acts like the first three movies never happened. Watching this film with no Will and Elizabeth or Jack Sparrow's crew or any of the characters I love, you know, that's all gone. Something else that I thought was really dumb in this film, honestly, is this romantic storyline between uh, this character and this mermaid. I'll put their names down here because their names slipped my mind. I had their names and I just completely forgot them now, but I thought that was really stupid. There was no need for there to be a dumb romance subplot with this mermaid. It was not believable whatsoever. And that mermaid sequence, I thought came out of nowhere. I was very 50-50 with that entire mermaid attack sequence. There's times where I thought it was actually pretty cool. And there's other times where I was like, uh, yeah, okay, that's enough. I really wasn't into it. And the movie really doesn't have any ship battles. Like, there's moments where characters are on ships, but you really don't get a ship battle, which I thought was sorely lacking here. And even the score in On Stranger Tides is so forgettable for the most part. And even the score in On Stranger Tides is not that exciting. The score in the first three movies are just so memorable. And when you hear the score here, it really is not as memorable. It doesn't really have most of the familiar uh, music that you would hear from the first three movies. And of course, the film even has an underwhelming climax. Besides the sword fight scene, even the climax did not even get me excited. The first film's climax got me excited. The second film's climax got me excited. The third film's climax especially got me excited. With On Stranger Tides, not so much personally. Overall, Parts of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, I don't think is bad. It's just a very lackluster movie. It's very underwhelming, especially 
coming off of the first three movies, which had so much awe and adventure, and there wasn't really much of adventure. I mean, it's not even really a Pirates movie, to be honest, but yes, you have Barbosa here, and yes, you have, um, you have Mr. Gibbs here, uh, but it didn't really feel like a Pirates movie, to be honest. I felt like it was more of a Jack Sparrow movie. And it also doesn't help that this film feels very straight to DVD. This really doesn't have that epic feeling that the first three movies have, in my opinion. The Fountain of Youth storyline is something that could have been interesting, but because of how it was executed, it really wasn't that interesting. The film was very boring for the most part. Parts of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, once again, I don't think it's bad I think it's fine but it really is nothing all that memorable I'm gonna give it two out of four stars I do think that it is so far the worst in this Pirates franchise that is my review you guys and now we're gonna see what Kevin thinks of on Stranger Tides so Kevin take it away now this is a movie that, like the third and second one, I went into very skeptical. I've gone to all three of these sequels uh, very skeptical what I was actually going to get out of them because of the very mixed reception, because of what a lot of people say. I didn't really know how this was really going to be, especially because of how much I enjoyed the first one, but that's also the reason I was looking forward to this one because unlike the other two, which I genuinely liked the mythology and I thought it actually did heighten the tension, this one is in fact a complete standalone. I didn't really know what I was going to get out of this, and especially since Elizabeth and Will are missing. Unfortunately, though, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides is an extremely underwhelming film that really just feels so random and just never really needs to be made, unfortunately. I really was not a huge fan of this movie. It wastes a lot of opportunities, and there's no reason against the plot because Tony already explained it, but let's just get this movie starting off with the cast. Now, in terms of acting, just like all the other Pirates films, that's not the problem here. I think all the acting is very strong. I think everyone still did a really good job. Let's get into Johnny Depp in this movie because holy shit, does he probably have, this is probably his most uh, important role yet because the entire movie, now that Elizabeth and Will are gone, most of the movie is relying solely on Captain Jack Sparrow. And Depp still does a good job of what he has the problem with this movie is that he is extremely overused, and it's to the point where almost every scene Jack Sparrow is in. There's not really a point in this movie where Jack Sparrow is more to the side like they did in the other films. This one, Jack Sparrow is in almost every scene, and they don't know when to quit with his character. And like I said, Depp does a good job of what he had, but some of the stuff they give him in this movie is just so downright obnoxious and you really start to get annoyed by this character, honestly. Like, I should never be annoyed by Jack Sparrow, but I was in this movie. He still is just as fun, he still is just as clever, and he still is just as selfish as he is in the other films. Uh, but this movie, I think they just took it one step too far. You know, they didn't scale back enough on it. They didn't add enough humanity stuff in there. It seemed like they wanted to develop his character more, but they just didn't. Like I said before... Jack Sparrow is just not as compelling of a character as this movie thinks. I think he is a compelling character, but the movie doesn't do enough backstory stuff with him for me to really get locked into his character. So as much as I did like Johnny Depp in this role, Jack Sparrow I thought was really overused, and because of that, it really does uh, fall the rest of him. He's a hell of a lot better than most of the characters in here, but I'll get into that in just a second. However, when it comes to the other actors in this movie, I don't think anyone is inherently bad, but no one's inherently good either, unfortunately. Let's talk about Penelope Cruz in this movie. Her character, Angelica... Look, I think Penelope Cruz isn't a bad actress by any means, but holy shit, do they try to shove this character down your throat. They do everything in their power to try to make this the new Elizabeth, and it really doesn't work. And it's mainly because Angelica is not nearly as interesting as a character as the movie really thinks she is. She's impersonating as Jack Sparrow. She's also Jack's, like, long-lost uh, lover, like a, a past lover that he used to have, and... She also has this connection to the main villain, Blackbeard, and while all that does sound interesting, the movie just doesn't know how to handle her scenes right. A lot of times you're just not really trusting her, and you're not, you don't really know if she's really on Jack's side and things like that. 
But it's not nearly as compelling as you really think it is. A lot of this movie is the interplay between them, and the chemistry is just not really there, unfortunately. You're supposed to feel like these two have a lot of history, but the movie doesn't really take the time to focus enough on their relationship to really get me to care. In fact, their relationship was an element of this movie that I just didn't really understand. Why did they break up? Why did this happen to them? What was their relationship like? I can't really tell you. The movie really only takes her in this one direction. I just really was not a huge fan of her character. There's a reason why they have have not brought her character back for the fifth one. It's mainly because of how bland of a character she really was. I really wanted to like her in this movie, but unfortunately, the movie shoves her down your throat so much that I just couldn't get myself to enjoy her that much, and because of that, it really did affect my overall enjoyment of a lot of what was going on, because a lot of this movie are these two together, and because of the fact that I just didn't care about her enough, it really did uh, further, you know, uh, it, it really did deter from my enjoyment of the overall film. Now, the big villain in this movie is something that Pirates has always done a really good job with. I think they've always had really good villains. Even Beckett, I didn't think was necessarily a terrible villain. I just thought that he was very uh, human, and I just didn't really think that he was that much of a threat. Ian McShane, I think overall, does a good job as a villain Blackbeard. I think that he's definitely very intimidating. You definitely get that sense that he's very much in control of what's going on. Unfortunately, just like Angelica, the movie does not know how to use him. He's involved in this plot that I just don't care about. He's the father of Angelica in this movie, we find out. And their connection in this movie, I just didn't really care that much about. And it's mainly because of the fact that, again... Angelica's just not that interesting of a character. Blackbeard could have been a lot more interesting, but they really do overcomplicate things with him, and they just don't make him nearly as interesting as he could have been. And yes, he is very vindictive, and yes, he is very powerful, but compared to Davy Jones and Barboza, it just doesn't really compare. I just did not find him to be that great. I think he did a good job of what he had, but I just unfortunately did not find myself caring that much about his character. So I think, again, it was a valiant attempt, even better than Penelope Cruz, but it just didn't really work. However, the one person that I still will praise in this film, Jeffrey Rush, still kills it as Barboza. Even though he doesn't have the most compelling arc in this movie, he still is a lot of fun to watch. You know, him and Jack are kind of on equal sides at this point. They are, in fact, allies, and seeing them work together I thought was really weird to see, but I like seeing them work together. I always love the banter between them. Unfortunately, the movie forgets the best part of Jack and Barboza's dynamic, and they separate them throughout most of this movie, and it really just doesn't work. Barboza is a great character, and Jeffrey Rush does such a great job in every scene he's in, but unfortunately, every scene is cut short for something that Jack's involved, and I think that really is a big problem in the film. Again, he you did a good job as usual, but I just didn't care, you know, I just didn't really feel like they had as good of a story with him as I did in the other films. Now, as far as the other characters in this movie, they're there, but I have to say this is probably the smallest cast yet. You could tell they wanted to get back to the vibe of the first one, where there's not as big as a cast, and unfortunately, unlike the first one, this one really does not work. Kevin McNally, uh, as Gibbs, I love this character, but he's literally in, like, only, like, three scenes in this movie, and the first scene he's in is one of the best scenes in the movie, I definitely will say. I'll get that more into that when we get into the screenplay, but he's always very entertaining. I really did love what they did with him. Uh, but this movie makes this very strange choice to add mermaids to the story, which I just didn't really understand. That whole aspect of the movie, I did not give a shit about. And the movie tries to have an Elizabeth and Will type romance uh, with Sam Claflin's character and this other mermaid. And you just don't care about these characters. They're so bland. They're so wooden. I felt like I was watching a bad freeform show at points. It was just so... Well, it was just really, uh, it, it's, it felt like a completely different movie than everything else that was going on. I didn't care about that romance at all. They don't nearly have the chemistry that Kira Knightley and Orlando Bloom have, and it's just, it's a very sour attempt to try to replicate that, and it just doesn't really work at all. I think it was, it just, it really didn't work, and the rest of the cast here, it's just kind of whatever. I didn't really think anyone particularly stand out here, and like I said, the cast in general uh, is just not as good as the other ones. However, now let's get to my main flaw with this film, which has to be the directing and the screenplay, especially the directing, because 
as you guys know, the first three films were all directed by Gore Verbinski, and they all kind of have that same tone. They get significantly darker as they go on, but they still all felt like Pirates films. You know, they were very uh, witty films at times. They were very fun. They still had that great mythology in there. This one dropped that, and not only did it get rid of uh, Gore Verbinski, but it brought in Rob Marshall, of all people, which this is one of his only two films that's not a musical, and it really does feel off from the other Pirates films. It's not that Rob Marshall, I think, is a bad director. He's a great director, but he should not be directing a Pirates film. That's just not where, uh, you know, his strong suit is. I just feel like his particular directing skills uh, <laughs> do not fit into that of a Pirates film. You know, the more... Uh, witty, ridiculous stuff. He tries to go for a lot more slapstick and a lot more kid-friendly stuff. And unfortunately, that just doesn't really work like it did in the first three films. I wish I could say it did, but it unfortunately just doesn't. I didn't really feel like that worked very well. And he also really scaled back, um on the uh, drama stuff, which I know a lot of people thought they got very heavy-handed with the darkness, but I actually thought it worked for the movies. It was showing the movies were maturing as they go on, and this one feels like a complete uh, detracting from that. It's really detracting from that. It's trying to pretend the three movies never happened. Let's get to the screenplay, because, oh my god, the screenplay in this movie. Look, a lot of people complain about the third one, that it's overblown, that it doesn't really make any sense. That's nothing compared to this one. This movie, I think, was so overproduced and so overbloated, even though it had a smaller cast, and it does everything completely the wrong way. Here's the thing with At World's End. People, com uh, people complain that that movie has too much going on. That's nothing compared to this movie. There's so much going on in this movie. They're trying to find the Fountain of Youth, and you would think that would be simple, but there's, like, this whole twist where, like, one side of it, you know, makes you, uh, you know, live forever. One, like, takes it away from you and things like that. You got Barboza off doing his own thing. You got this plot between Jack and, uh, like, Angelica, and it's just not that interesting. You got the whole mermaids in this movie. You got, uh, Jack's crew doing something else. I mean, there's so much shit going on in this movie that it was honestly really hard to follow at points, and I just didn't care at about certain subplots. But the other thing that really did piss me off, as I said in the directing, is that this movie pretends like the first three movies never happened. There's not a single mention of Elizabeth or Will. There's not a single mention of anything that went down in the first three movies. And I get it, this is two years after, but... I, come on, I mean, you gotta at least acknowledge that those movies happen. Yes, a lot of people aren't fans of them, but I always say, when you are someone who headlines a franchise and you have a franchise, you have to stick with what you did. You can't just completely abandon something. That's not how it works. You know, when you set up a plot point, you have to stick to that. You can't just, you know, drop it because that's just lazy writing. I mean, that's exactly what this movie is. There's a lot of lazy writing in here. To make this feel like the two films didn't happen, but I mean, they did. That's just kind of the thing, is that those two films did happen. And in my opinion, they're not bad films, because the thing that those films relied on were character. And this movie, I don't think really did that that well. The characters in this movie are really not great. Even Jack Sparrow gets annoying after a while, I have to say. The first, like, 20 minutes of this movie, though, I really did enjoy, I have to say, with Jack Sparrow just, uh, trying to clear up his name in, like, this court thing. That was a lot of fun, but once the movie gets off of that and starts to go more into the, uh, you know, further into the into Mexico and things like that, I found it to be very boring, and I have to say, uh, something which you guys should know is that this is the movie that has the least of the Black Pearl, because most of this movie, we don't know where the Black Pearl is. He's barely on the ship in this movie. Movie, and it just doesn't feel like a Pirates film. I mean, that's just one of the essential things you need to have in a Pirates film. And the fact that he's not on the Black Pearl in this movie, uh, it just feels very off. It really feels like something is missing, and I feel like that was something that really just didn't work in this movie, unfortunately. Like I said, the screenplay is just not interesting. They really do overcompensate a lot of what could have been very simple plotting, and I don't know why they had to overcomplicate things, definitely. The cinematography here is still great. I will definitely say it. The cinematography is great. The visuals still look fantastic. Nothing really bad in the visuals department. This movie, however, honestly felt like there were action scenes every 20 minutes, and I don't know if that was actually the case, but it very well did feel that way, and it just gets really annoying after a while. The reason it worked in Black Pearl and Dead Man's Chest and in uh, At World's End is because 
those action scenes were long, but they needed to be long. And this movie, the action scenes aren't even really that long. They're like two to three minutes long. Most of them are very unmemorable. There's a great action scene in the beginning, but after that, most of the action scenes just really are not that great, I have to say. And I really do think the movie uh, overused the action a lot here. I think they noticed how... People were, I guess, bored by the other ones. They're like, all right, the solution to that is just let's throw as much action in here as possible. But no, it doesn't go with the story. It feels like they just have random action just to have random action. The climax is good, I will say. I like the way the climax is done, especially once Jack and Barboza are reunited. Then I thought the movie started to get a little bit better. But unfortunately, it focuses so much on Angelica and on Blackbeard, two characters that I just don't really care about that... It just didn't really save the overall film for me. As much as the movie tries to, I just don't care about these characters enough for me to really get fully invested in what's going on. The movie is the shortest in the Pirates franchise, but it feels like the longest. It goes on for so long, and so many scenes just drag. Any scene involving these two especially, I did not give a shit about those characters, and any scene of them just drags and drags and drags, and I just don't care about those characters. Again, they you could tell they were trying to recreate that of Elizabeth and Will, and it really does not work whatsoever. Those two characters, I really did not find that interesting. A lot of expository dialogue involving them, and I just didn't really care as much about them than the movie really wanted me to. I found that to be very um, unnecessary. However, I will say the way this movie ends does set up the fifth one to be at least a little bit more compelling. I will definitely say that. I think the fifth one is going to be a little bit better. It looks like a more traditional Pirates film, and that's really the main problem with this, that it's it's too traditional. It doesn't feel like a Pirates film. It's more of a standalone thing, and even the post credit scene is something we'll never see again because they're not bringing Angelica back, and it, it makes sense because she really was not the interesting of a character to begin with, I have to say. So overall, guys, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Ties is not at all a bad film, but it's not nearly as good as the first three is. I don't think it's nearly has, it's not on that epic scale that the first three are. I still think the second and third had a lot more interesting stuff than this one does. The problem is these characters, you just don't really care about them. Most of them are very one notes, and it doesn't feel like a pirate film. You don't really get that pirate sense here. A lot of that magic and fun is really gone with this movie, and I think they really did overdid it, and they tried to make it this kid's movie, and it just really didn't work, and I think Pirates need to be at least a little bit darker for the series to actually work, or else it's just kind of silly, and unfortunately, that just didn't really work here. I think the setting in general even just really did deter from the overall film. I have to give Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides a 2.5 out of 5 or a C. So, overall, guys, that's it for our Pirates reviews. Uh, I hate for this to be the ending, honestly, I really do, because... Uh, I really was hoping we could end on a higher note, but the good thing is we now have Pirates 5. This isn't the last Pirates movie now. Um, but when all is said and done, guys, I actually did have a lot of fun doing these collab reviews, I have to say. And I have to absolutely give a big thank you to 22 Tiger Dude, who not only agreed to do these collab reviews with me, which in general I'm very happy because as I told you guys before, I'm very happy to do these collab reviews. I, I like to do as many as possible, uh, but... He really went above and beyond, I have to say. I mean, he took the time to edit basically almost every single one of these videos. Most of the editing stuff, that was all 22 Tiger Dude. I didn't ask him to do that. He offered to do that, so thank you for that. Really, thank you. I really do appreciate you for doing that. I think it really did. Uh, this was definitely one of my favorite collabs that I've done. I really did love the skit in the beginning and things. I think that was just a lot of fun, the way that did tie into all four of the films. But either way, guys, that's it for our conclusion of the Pirates films. But that's my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Okay, bye. Thank you so much, Kevin Folk, for your review of Parts of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. And you guys, that completes our collab review series for Parts of the Caribbean. If you guys have not checked out Kevin Folk's channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. He's a great guy. He's just a very great friend in general. He does have a very cool channel. But you guys, this is 20 to Tiger Dude here. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.